Not long ago, somebody asked me the question, why do people talk about God showing up when, when, when he is, in fact, everywhere? He, he, he can't really show up. He's already there, right? Well, on the one hand, the questioner makes a good point. God is indeed everywhere. The, the theological term is that he is omnipresent. He is present in all places at all times. I think, I think David the psalmist did a really good job of expressing that in Psalm 139. He said this, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So clearly, God is everywhere. No question about it. You cannot go to a place where God isn't already present. But to stop with just that understanding would be to miss the, the, the more complete picture. Re remember back in the, in the Old Testament when the Israelites were getting ready to go into the Promised Land, God told Joshua, I will be with you, I will not leave you. Now, now all right, let's be honest here. That seems kind of obvious, right? I mean, for a God who is omnipresent to say that he's going to be with you, he won't leave you, is, well, kind of repetitively redundant, don't you think? But see, in, the, in, in reality, even, even though the Lord was, was everywhere, he was somehow more with the people of Israel than he was with the people of other nations. E even earlier than that, in the opening chapters of the Bible, we already kind of get a glimpse of this idea. Genesis chapter 4, verse 16, it says this, Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. You know, if you remember, uh, Jonah did the same thing. He, it says that he fleed away from the presence of the Lord. Now, think about it. How could Cain, how could Jonah escape the presence of an omnipresent God? Or think back to the dedication of Solomon's temple. Something extraordinary happened, and I, I mean that in the full sense of the word. It was extraordinary. 1 Kings chapter 8, it says this, And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The God who is everywhere showed up in a, a special way in that place that day. Okay, so, so let's jump ahead to the New Testament era. In the book of Luke, Zechariah, the guy who became the father of John the Baptist, he had a conversation with an angel, and in Luke 1.19, the angel says this, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. So without question, the implication of that statement is that, that there are those who don't stand in the presence of God, or at least don't stand in the, 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 the same dimension, I guess, of, of the presence of God as Gabriel does. The, the book of James tells us uh, to, to draw near to God. Think about that. How can somebody draw near? The, the, the New Living Translation says to come close to God. How can someone come close to God when he is already everywhere? Interestingly, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews uses that same draw near to God phrasing three different times. And, and think about this. In that James 4, 8 verse, draw near to God, James continues by telling us, and he will draw near to you. What? If, if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us? How, how can the God who is everywhere, right, right next to you, right inside you, how, how can he draw near to you? He, he's already there, isn't he? And, and, and one more idea here, a verse that you probably already know, Jesus promised, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. That's a great promise. But, but I want you to notice what Jesus didn't say. He didn't tell us that he would be at, at a gathering of two or three that were there for a party or to watch a movie or to see a baseball game, whatever. Now, now in all honesty, we should recognize that since he is omnipresent, he's in those, two, those places too, right? But, but what he was promising was a a greater dimension, a more complete manifestation of his presence. He, he promised to be among those who gather in his name. 
You know, there are so many references to the presence of the Lord in Scripture that, that it would take way too long for us to go through all of those in this short video. That's not going to happen. But it's obvious that those references, most of them are talking about something other than just the, the, the general God is everywhere presence. So even though God is indeed everywhere, even though he is omnipresent, there are clearly times and places where he, he makes his presence known in a, a greater, a more profound, a more, more tangible, maybe even more personal way. So as strange as it may sound to our finite minds, apparently God can show up. If you like more practical videos like this, just sign up at myworshipleadingcoach.com.